Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Breaking the Code. One topic, no script. And this week, we've got another episode for you, and it's going to be top five teams in comic books. So I'm going to go ahead and start this one off, Jamie, with my number five. And I think you're going to be pretty excited about what that is. And it is going to be... At the tingles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ooh, now that's <laughs> on my list. Oh, we'll okay. See where it falls. Okay, right on. So, so okay. The reason I chose Ninja Turtles, I think they are the perfect example of what a team should be. Four brothers. They agree on next to nothing, but when it comes to them having to take care of each other and defend each other and be there for each other, they are exactly what they need to be as far as a team is concerned. It Raphael, sounds like our show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo, and Donatello. Uh, I grew up with those guys. I mean, the, the cartoon, the comic books, the movies, uh, good and bad, uh, Secret of the Use, anyone? Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, okay. yeah, it's 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 the perfect example of what I think a team should be, and I think it's a great way to start off this list. So, Jamie, what is your number five okay now we can mix or match this okay and i'm saying that for a reason okay and I'll get into it but my number five is the original power rangers team Ooh, okay and the reason i say you can mix or match is because you could take out obviously the passing of the actress for trini mm-hmm. um jason and uh zach you could take them all out and you could replace them with rocky aisha and adam okay and it's still good. One, of, like I said in our previous uh, episode, for movies that set the standard for us, mm-hmm. um, it, that the Power Rangers movie was one of them. That's right. Um, yeah, I'm always gonna have that special place in my heart for the original team. Um, something that I grew up on. I thought I was at one point the Red Ranger, and then okay. I realized I wasn't cool, and I was more of Adam. So <laughs> okay. I, I was like, oh, the frog, that's me. Yay. Um, <laughs> I'm a frog. <laughs> yeah. What's what's wrong with you? I'm a frog. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't turn into some handsome prince when you kiss it. I kind of just <laughs> melt and fall. But aside from my personal matters in my life that I need to work on for PTSD <laughs> reasons, <laughs> that is my original team. Me and Tim have been covering Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers coming out of Boom Studios right now with the reviews, so go check those out. And yeah, you guys definitely. will see why those teams have that special place in my heart. Right on. Okay, so Power Rangers for number five. So let's go ahead and go to the number four spot. So my number four spot is a uh, number specific. Uh, I, I think they fit right in here at this number, and uh, they also have that number on their uniforms, and that would be the Fantastic Four. So, yeah, so so Fantastic Four, uh, Marvel's family, right? Uh, Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards, Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, and the ever loving blue-eyed Ben Grimm, otherwise known as The Thing. Uh, it's it's a no-brainer as far as top five teams go. Uh, it, the, these are the people that started the Marvel Age of Comics, uh, and even through the events that Marvel and 20th Century Fox went through when the Fantastic Four were kind of shunned for a little while, they came back, and they came back with a vengeance. Uh, Reed Richards and and sue storm their marriage and unification johnny storm you know and and their kids that Mm -hmm. that they had uh ben Grimm's always been in the middle of that herbie the robot uh it's it's just it's it's what a family should be as as far as like team centric goes in in the superhero world you know they all love each other they they disagree but uh they're always there for each other they always are there to comfort and guide Mm -hmm and uh point them in the right direction you know what i mean even though reed richards is distracted more times than not with whatever calculations he's working on to prevent the negative zone and annihilus from conquering the world or thinking up new ways to uh create uh 
items to stop Galactus. You know, Sue Storm's always there to kind of bring him back down to Earth and be like, look, you, you need to step away for a second. You need to spend time with your kids. Uh, and Ben Grimm, you know, the thing, it's clobber in time. And Johnny Storm, the hothead, uh, it, it it all fits and it all works. And, and I think that they really deserve that number four spot. So that, that is a great pick. I just wanted to say Cloud Galactus loves forever. <laughs> <laughs> What's your number four for top so, five teams? I've been flip-flopping all day, and I kind of told you what my number four was before this started, and it flipped. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. At number four, I have the Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts. And the reason... I love them so much is because that is the first book that threw off an entire comic book fan base. Everyone thought the kind of, there were Thunderbolts coming out. It was going to be another team up superhero, mm-hmm. you know, extravaganza. Come to find out it's the Suicide Squad version. <laughs> <laughs> For Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, that's and right. Just the, like the villains, the anti-heroes that been through there from, from Venom. Hawkeye was running at one point. Like Baron Zemo. Baron Zemo. I, it, the list can go on forever with yeah. the amount of people that have come through. Norman there. Osborn. Yeah, and it Iron just, Patriot. It doesn't stop. No. So they, <laughs> to me, pulling that was probably the greatest moment in comics to me. One of the okay. top moments in comics to me was just like, hey, we got a new comic coming out, and the description had nothing to do with it being <laughs> villains. And then when you got the book, it's the Suicide Squad, but for Marvel. And That's I amazing. love that that they just just shaked and baked the whole <laughs> community. <laughs> like it, they, it, you can't get any better than that. And then it was amazing as well. Like oh it was God. well written. It was well done. There's always a part. Bagley of it. did the artwork for Thunderbolts for a little while. Yes, he did. Yep. Um, and you know, it, they're still running, which is awesome. Which, well, and, and wasn't the story Dark Rain, wasn't that a major uh, yes. storyline for the Thunderbolts? Yes. They yeah. even made another appearance in King and Black when Kingpin put them together. And it, it was just, it was too good to be true. Nice. Okay, so Thunderbolts at number four. Let's go ahead and move to number three. So my number three is uh, a team... Uh, what's what's the what's the best way to describe them without describing them? A uh, bunch of teenagers starting out, uh, little frigid, uh, can read some minds and has to wear glasses all the time to make sure he doesn't blow a hole in the side of a mountain. The kids uh, next door from Cartoon Network? No, it would oh. be uh, the X Men. So, oh, the team that I. Why is that even on your list? That's no, uh, Sonny's favorite team. So, yeah, the X-Men. Uh, like like you said, the X-Men are super interchangeable. I mean, you have the, the starting team with Professor X, Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Jean Grey, Iceman, Beast, and the Angel. Uh, and then it just grows and grows and grows from there. At this point, I'm an have. X-Men. Right, exactly. Everybody is. But, uh, I mean, X-Men came out during... Uh, time of turmoil for the United States uh, with the civil rights movement and they were a great representation of what was going on in the real world but put into comic book form and they yeah. still fit that bill today uh, and you know some of some of the greatest characters in comics are or have been X-Men uh, Wolverine Storm Shadow Cat. Oh don't get me started on Wolverine <laughs> Not again. Uh, X-23, uh, Archangel, uh, and, and some of their villains are on the greatest villains list. That would be Apocalypse, Magneto, uh, God, uh, Onslaught is another one. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on. Juggernaut even, who was even a good guy for a little while. That's yeah. weird. Uh, but, but yeah. Good with, times. With, Exactly. With X-Men, you have the Splinter teams like X-Factor and Excalibur and X-Force and the X-Babies and and all that stuff. Uh, X, when, when you think of a Marvel team, one of the first teams that would come to mind is X-Men. Sure. Um, <laughs> we'll go with that. So what's your uh, number three? 
My number three was your number five. I'm going with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, okay. like you said, four brothers that you know should not be making it as they should with an adoptive rat father. That's right. Um, it sounds like us. Yeah. But I, I'm just trying to figure out which one am I? Uh, you would probably be uh, Donatello with Raphael's attitude. Yes, and Michelangelo's witty piece of loveliness. <laughs> I am all a of them. Bit Thank of you. All of them. There you go. Yeah, yeah, Sunny is. Of of you just make me sound like I just ha- like have void rage half the time. Like, Sunny, Sunny's like you got Raphael's temper. <laughs> Sunny's Michelangelo all the way. That's fine. Um, but no, I mean they've been added on uh, Jenica. Yeah. to the recent roster so many years of it just being them four and then boom we have another member and not a lot of people were receptive to it because they're used to it but like i say every right. time we talk about it everyone wants change until there's change exactly um and that's the biggest aspect is they still run they're still running they changed origin stories they've they've changed up the way they are like mm-hmm. how the retcon after retcon um we had movies that I should probably have never watched when I was younger. <laughs> and we had movies now that no one should probably watch when they're older. No. Um, I still enjoy them because I'm a big kid at heart and no one can tell me no. I will say though that the animated TMNT movie is was amazing. still a great, great movie. Agreed. We're talking comics right now though. For well, movies. yeah, um, but we're talking Ninja um, Turtles, so. It's fine. Um, everyone's got flaws. That's so, right. With them, it's just, you know, you, you could change, basically retcon the whole thing as long as you keep that core together. That's right. Nothing's ever, you're, you're never going to lose it. Like right now with Last Run, and they're all gone. Except Spoiler, for right? one. Except for one. And I'm not going to say which one it is, but he's pretty funny. If you um, haven't read it yet, you need to. <laughs> yes, definitely. It's coming out very slowly for a couple issues, but yeah. it's well worth the wait. And that was um, a title that was on my list of best comics of the year for the Codex Awards, too. Yes, yeah, the first annual. Go check that out, guys. Yep. We can use the views and the likes on there. Okay, so TMNT, the Ninja Turtles for number three. So let's go ahead and move to number two. Uh, my number two and my number one, uh, I they could share the same spot. It could be a tie. But mm-hmm. my number one, I think, is the more justified than my number two but my number two is is equally as important and uh that would be the avengers the the avengers dude i mean transcended a whole world they are a global phenomenon when you when you think of the avengers you think of captain america you think of iron man you think of the black panther you think of Spider-Man even, who's an Avengers Reserve or was a full-fledged member of the new Avengers. You think of any slew of another number of characters. Thor, the Scarlet Witch, Vision, uh, the Incredible Hulk. The list goes on and on. I think every... Exactly. I think every character in the Marvel Universe has been... Uh, in Avengers or on the reserves list or is in Avenger currently. Uh, yeah, they, they're an iconic team. They are Marvel's flagship team and they're a flagship team for a reason. Uh, the, the Avengers have saved the universe, saved the planet, saved the kittens out of trees countless times against the largest of foes. They've been in the middle of intergalactic wars interdimensional wars company crossovers uh it goes on and on and on and right in the middle is usually the core group of avengers iron man the incredible hulk captain america hawkeye black widow the ones that we saw in the mcu you know that the avengers movie it's 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 a team you can't forget it's team members are members that you'll always remember uh and it's a team that you always want to read and be part of exactly and i gotta agree with you that is a great spot for them unfortunately they didn't make my list oh (laughs) yes um they did find a way to steal my heart oh okay and and all that um they're honorable mention for me they would be right underneath power rangers for me um 
as a team. With the comics, it's a different story for me. But with the movies, I mean, come on. Right, you can't like, go wrong. Can't. There is, oh. It's never a miss. But for me, at my number two. Okay. We got to unite a little bit here. My number two is the Justice League. Oh, Justice League at number two. Yes. And come on, can you think of a better team than Hal Jordan, Bruce Wayne, Batman, Superman, Barry Allen as a Flash? Not Wally West, like the animated series. Um, Blue Beetle you know, was, was a member of the Justice League. Guy Gardner, yeah. it, John it Stewart. Just, we don't talk about John Stewart. Um, <laughs> but no, it's just been like the team has always been amazing to me mm-hmm. they, they each one of them has a characteristic flaw yeah that i fit with and it's always been an emotional attachment to them no matter what um they've had their own share of movies one eh, other one amazing um they're doing great things now i mean ever since even like crisis on infinite Earths, like yeah. how could you not up to this point, even though Bendis is writing it right now and kind of destroying <laughs> my love, um, I'm still reading it, you know, and they're interchangeable. I mean, Black Adam's on the team right now. That's interesting. I, how? And somehow he fits. Wow. Like, he's, like <laughs> how can I put it? He's like, if Superman had Angel and a Devil, Black Adam's right here, and then, like, Lois is somewhere here. Wow. But, and it, he... You can't go wrong with a team that always finds a way when the chips are down the way. Right. You might have an alien as your leader that can shoot laser beams and is unstoppable. <laughs> um, but you have humanized characters, too. Mm-hmm. Batman. Characters, characters with flaws. You know, yeah. and you take the ring off a lantern, you still have a warrior. Yeah. Barry Allen. Oh, Barry Allen. He, he still figured it out. He's the Flash. <laughs> I mean... There's no way around it. Okay, so your number two is Justice League. Well, let's go ahead and continue that conversation because Ooh. my number one is Justice League. And there's a reason for that. So where the Justice Society may have been DC's first official team of heroes. The first uh, love. Right. The Justice League is the pinnacle of superhero teams. Uh, You have the greatest characters in comic book history on the Justice League roster, the DC Trinity, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman, always core members. One of those three are always there. Uh, Mm -hmm. When when Superman, uh, during the death of Superman and things like that, Wonder Woman took over the team. Batman has led the team. Superman leads the team. Uh, and then let, let's go down the list of other characters. Black Canary's been on the team. Green Arrow. Red Tornado. Red Tornado. The Question, Elongated Man, Hawkman, Hawk Girl, Kyle Rayner, he's right there. Uh, yeah, Blue Beetle. Somewhere in the room. Over here. Uh, it just, Zatanna. It just goes on and on and on. And I mean, like, you had you you had Wally West. You've had mm-hmm. uh, Dick Grayson because he was Batman yeah. for a short time. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just when you're a member of the Justice League, it means something. It's it not absolutely like you, does. It, it's not like you just got a card saying like I'm a reserve. No, you're a member. When you're needed, you go into battle. And and when uh, when Meltzer was writing Justice League and and his uh, I think his zero issue was Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman sitting there picking yes. members for the new roster. That was an amazing. That was one of my favorite little... mo- like one one probably if not my favorite like comic to sit down and go back yeah. to. What because about of the fact what about Dick it... Grayson on just like, no no. You didn't even ask him, did you, Batman? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> no. He don't love his kids. But but yeah, like you said, it's 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 a great story. It's a great piece of comic book uh, to sit down and read. And and it, like, like I said with the Avengers, the Avengers, you know, they've saved the Earth and they've saved the universe countless times. The Justice League have done just as much, if not more, uh, fighting Dark Side. Uh, fighting against uh, Invasion, uh, Armageddon, 2001, Zero Hour, uh, the 
infinite amount of crisis on infinite earths and <laughs> final crises and etc 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 metals and dark dimensional <sighs> different world batman and if, now we're gonna have uh i did, don't even know dark crisis if you're a hero in the dc universe you might die your goal <laughs> is to be on the justice league and let us not forget the justice league's core the justice league center and that would be martian manhunter uh it's come on martian manhunter is uh dc's vision right that's what vision is over in marvel uh that's another character that that is a piece of justice league history and you, you you can't get away with it so or get away from it so yeah justice league is my number one so let the me only, go through. The, i would say the only character that i do not agree with ever in justice league is cyborg and that is a rant for another day cyborg i think he needs to stay on the titans that's where i think i he think belongs. he just needs to be alone for a while <laughs> Okay, so Jamie, before you go into your number one, I'm going to rattle off my top five one more time and then go for it. we'll hear your number one. So my five teams in comic books from five to one would be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, mm -hmm. Fantastic Four, the X-Men, the Avengers, and to top it all off, the Justice League. So, Jamie, before you get to your number one, go ahead and start from five and go right up to your reveal. Number five was the OG Power Rangers, where you can kind of flip-flop, you know, depending on who your preference is at that era. Mm -hmm. Number four for me was Thunderbolts. Three, TMNT. Two, the Justice League. And my number one, if you don't know, now you do. Uh, the Green Lantern Corps. There you go. And they have been my flagship since i got introduced to comics um hell jordan yeah his biggest fear is being afraid and failure yeah um kyle rayner I, you can't miss with that guy having his it, fiance stuffed in a fridge yes and we will not talk about what you want to talk about and i know what you're trying to do right now tim and we're not we're not doing that 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 was a secret for me to keep <sighs> um so you know, you got John Stewart who yeah. lost someone he loved, and then the world, the, he lost the world. Yeah. You know, and then you got Guy Gardner that just gets angry. So, S Sinistro, even on the team. And, and yeah, Sinistro, go Kilowog. You know, you Kilowog. I, I, you leave Nord alone. Um, you have Chip the Squirrel. I know we're going a little bit farther. You have that one donut looking character I can never remember the name of. Right. You know the, the the list goes on for them yeah. um they've always had like when i imagine everything i kind of been through in life their compassion their willpower their fears their weaknesses their strengths all kind of culminate with me mm -hmm. and i've always been lost in that centric area except you know grant morrison's runs but i still i still bought him but grant morrison is, is becoming a very sore spot on the codex station ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I you can't go wrong with them. If you think about, you know, certain areas, they expanded the universe with their color, you know, the uh, emotional spectrum, you know, having, you know, red lanterns, yellow lanterns, purple, indigo, white, black, you know, death life. You have Blackest Night, which is probably the best story I have ever, if not yet, yeah, it's the best story I've ever read. Um, and culminated taking over everybody else's issues. It, I've never seen anything like that in my life, and I don't think I ever will again, but done properly. Right on. Okay. Dude, that is a great pick for your number one. It's not unexpected, but uh, yeah. I, I, I thought there was going to be another team on your list, and I'm kind of sad that it wasn't on there. Who, who are you talking? The JSA. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I wanted the JSA, but I feel like I would have just been all DC related if I put JSA in there. And I wanted to kind of give some variety, you know? Do you I have any? To... Oh, go ahead. No, I wanted to put a little bit of uh, variety in there. I didn't want everyone being like, Jamie's just a DC guy. No, I kind of branch out, guys. I mean, I got stuff all over that shows that. 
do you have any honorable mentions before we go ahead and end the show? Yeah, definitely JSA is one mm-hmm. of them. Um, Jeff Johns hits gold whatever he touches. So that run alone, uh, astounding. Um, I would say Avengers are definitely, definitely up there. Yeah. Um, if not, they were my close five. Yeah. And they then, were your number 5.5. Yeah, my number 5.5. <laughs> um, and then if I had to pick one more, I'd probably go with the Suicide Squad. Right on. Okay. Uh, How about so, you? So uh, some honorable mentions for me. Uh, Titans would yes. be one. Justice Society was on my list. X Factor was one that I had chosen. Uh, Outsiders was a thought. Alpha Flight. <laughs> it was a thought. It, it was. And, and not like when Batman was running the team, but when mm-hmm. Arsenal and Nightwing were running the team, yes. that's when it was good. That's when um, you felt emotion. Dude, I read the whole series start to finish, and that's still one of my favorite uh, runs in comic books, uh, Outsiders. I can't remember the guy that wrote that series, but uh, it was absolutely amazing. Guys, look it up if you haven't read it. It's the one with Nightwing and Arsenal running the team, and it was super duper good but another team on there that that i had and they're probably the most dysfunctional of them all but i thought it was a a worthy mention uh would be Watchmen. yeah i mean i could see that i mean they did revolutionize the modern era of comics that's um, true i learned that from you just like two three weeks ago from our yeah. podcast yeah guys if you didn't see that on the podcast it was a question in our do you know uh which what uh, comic book uh, title is seen by many as the start of the modern age. Now, it's not the only title that uh, officially starts the modern age, but this is one that a lot of people point to and say right here at this point, this is the start. And that would be the Watchmen series. Guys, if you haven't read that, which I think most of you have, but if Mm -hmm. uh, some of you haven't, uh, stop what you're doing right now and go get yourself a copy of the trade or find the single issues if you can. Uh, and uh, yeah, check it out. It's wonderful. Yeah, don't story. Li- real fast. Don't listen to Tim. Wait till the video's over. <laughs> Hit the like button, please. Just oh, yeah. There you go. go. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. All right, Jamie, before we get out of here, you got anything else you want to say? As always, guys, uh, just I'm overly, overly happy with everybody's reception of us. Thank you guys as always. Be kind to one another. Uh, love you guys from the bottom of my heart, each and every one of you, even the ones that don't like me. Um, too bad you're gonna see me. Uh, you know, comment down below your favorite teams. Uh, share, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss any more of the content that we are putting out. Because I promise you, it's always gonna get better. And with everything we've done so far, sky's the limit. Absolutely, guys. And once again, you can find us on all the social medias and anywhere podcasts are streaming. That would be Instagram, Facebook, uh, right here on YouTube, Twitch, uh, Twitter, over on Spotify, iTunes, the list goes on. All you got to do to find us is type in the Codex Station. And there we are. Uh, Once again, my name is Tim. This guy over here is Jamie. This is Breaking the Code, and you guys have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one.